Hello YouTube and welcome to my instructional video on NBA 2K15, my GM mode. And this video, um, this series of videos will be all about how to build your dynasty um, in NBA 2K15. So right off, we're going to pick the 76ers, probably the worst team in the game, and we're going to build the team out of them. So I got a really, really good deal from the Bucks right here. Our 2017 first round pick and someone I don't care about, Robert Covington, for Giannis and their 2017 first round pick. So I'm thinking in 2017, we're going to be better than the Bucks. So I'm thinking that we're not only getting Giannis, but we're also getting a pick that is going to um, turn into a better pick, essentially. So you just go through in Trade Finder, and you're trying to find really good deals. And there's going to be tips behind all of this little bit of strategy but essentially you're not trading just for people that you'd like to get like if you want someone on your team and you can't get them right away you're gonna have to trade through quite a few people to actually get that player so right now I'm trading Luke Richard Bamute and um, we're probably not gonna get anyone that's going to be a starter on our team we're just gonna build players that we're going to eventually be able to trade for other players so I'm not really seeing anything I like so far um, can't really remember which trade I actually end up with. Yeah, it looks like Carlos Boozer and a first round draft pick. Now, for Mbamute, we're actually gaining salary cap space. That's the other thing you need to think about when you're doing this, is the um, salary cap at the top. If it's negative, that's bad. You won't be able to sign the free agents. If, if it's positive, that's good. You can sign free agents, you can sign extensions to your players, but essentially, if that's a negative number, you're not going to be able to keep anyone. And I'm trying to get a whole bunch of young players who can develop into better players. So if you get a young person that's over 70 overall, chances are he can be 80 to 90 overall um, by two years through. So well, essentially what we're doing is getting a whole bunch of young players and we'll be simulating to improve them. And I'm going to show you guys exactly how to get different ways of improving them. There's a couple different tips and tricks on how to get those players to improve, but right now we're just trading for people. So when you get kind of bored of doing trade finder through your own team, you can actually go to other teams and do trade finders for other players you like. So Hassan Whiteside actually had a really good game. He had his triple double uh, just recently. His first, I mean, his first huge game, kind of his breakout game. So I was going to try to get him, but he's a little bit difficult to get. So we're going to see if Lance Stevenson is a little bit easier to get. Michael K. Gilchrist. See, I'm just kind of flipping through players that are young who I wouldn't mind adding to my team. Now, I know Hassan Whiteside is 25, so he's kind of on the limit there. But I could have had a pretty good deal with K. Gilchrist, but I have, like, Henry Sims, a couple guys who are two and a half stars. And if they're two and a half stars, you can get pretty decent players for them. So we're going to see what we can get. Uh, Rudy Gobert for these days. Look like Henry Sims in a second round pick. But we're we're really going to keep that in the back of our minds, what we can get for players, and then go back to them later. We want to be sure we're getting the best deal for every player. So if you have kind of a deal you kind of like, but you're not sure, uh, you can always go back to it. But the idea behind this is to trade my bank, my backup players who aren't going to play and keep all my young players. So I'm going to try to keep Carter Williams, I'm try to keep KJ McDaniels, Joel Embiid, New Orleans Noel. Um, and I'll let you know right now, my plan for this was to start um, to start Joel Embiid and New Orleans Noel, but I might get a few deals that change that. So it looks like we can grab Alfred Payton up for practically nothing, so we're going to do that. Alfred Payton is kind of in the rookie of their contention this year. Uh, Andrew Wiggins is kind of falling away with it, which is good because I'm a Timberwolves fan, so I'm glad that's going down that way, but Alfred Payton's having an outstanding year. So the other thing is I'm going to go down to the bottom of my team and see who's eating up salary. So Ben Gordon's eating up four and a half million a year, so you're going to want to get rid of those players. Um, I have so many first round picks now because of the 76ers and I've also gotten a few in trades and whatnot. So throughout this video I get a whole bunch of first round picks. But we're just we're trying to just build the team. Now this is kind of a weird deal actually, because I give up a second round pick and Ben Gordon and I just get Gary Neal. But for some reason in this game, there's a lot of teams who really want Gary Neal. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that trade. So I get went from a one and a half star player to a two star player with the addition of a second round draft pick. Um, seems kind of crazy right now, but I'm going to go ahead and trade Finder for Gary Neal right away, because I, I know I can usually get a decent player for him. We'll see what we can get. Okay. 
Okay, we're going with the deal from Reese Bates, and the whole point behind that is he's two and a half stars as opposed to two stars, and he's about the same salary. So again, we're using those second round picks just to improve our players a little bit, and that's something else that really helps uh, improve your trading um, opportunities in this game, is because second round picks don't add a whole lot, but a two and a half star player compared to a two star player can really give your team a lot. So it looks like Tristan Thompson is a possible destination. Um, the 76ers trade with the Cavaliers to get Thompson. We'll see what we'll goes down. And again, I, you want to be sure to get the absolute best deal. So even if you see something you really like and there's 28 offers received, you don't want to flip through all of them. So I was very tempted with the Kenneth Reed offer, actually. But he's got a pretty decently large salary. I think he's getting paid about $12 million a year. And he's only a three-star athlete, so he's really good in real life, don't get me wrong. But we're going to go with the Tristan Thompson deal. And like I said, Tristan Thompson might not start. That's the thing, is he might not even stay on the team. Before this first game, I'm trading players like three different teams. So if you want to really build a dynasty, you have to do this. And you have to do this before the first game. Because you're going to want your team to build chemistry together. And you're going to want players to feel secure in your team. So before the first game even happens, you want all the trades to happen. There's kind of three coming up again. Now, Tobias Harris, I'm always intrigued by that trade, but then again, he's a free agent at the end of the year. Typically, the Magic don't resign him, uh, I've found in this game, so I, I usually don't ever trade for him. So I couldn't really see anything I liked for Tristan Thompson, so we're just going to hold off for now and see what else we can get. Uh, we're going to see if anybody's interested in Carlos Boozer. Now, here's a trade, because Austin Rivers is actually 22 years old. Um, Hito Turgu is kind of a throw-in, but we're, we're giving up Boozer, who's kind of an old guy, and Jakar Sampson, who's a one-star athlete, uh, for Austin Rivers, who can develop and, like I said, might not even be a part of the team because he might get traded. We are doing more trades than you've ever seen in a MyGM, I can guarantee it. Because um, I'm just shuffling around players, and you can see how much it actually works. Like, I can get very good players. And I'll let you know right now, I use either two or 3,000 VC in trades, so I kind of, like, convince the players a little bit. See, now, this is what I'm talking about. Tristan Thompson and Tony Roten for Julius Randle. Now, I don't know if you guys think that's a good trade, but I know for a fact Julius Randle, after two seasons in this, becomes, like, a five-star athlete. So, um, being that he is 19 and was a top 10 pick, I think this deal is what I gotta jump on. Um, I know Roten's good, Tristan Thompson's good, but yeah, I'm going to go right back to that trade, I think. And again, I really like the Julius Randle deal, but I'm searching all my possibilities to make sure that it's absolutely the best deal I can get, but securing someone like Julius Randle, the 19-year-old, would be quite amazing. He'd really help the team. Now again, I also considered uh, Kenneth Reed again. But now it looks like they want Jamie Lynn as well with that Miami first round pick. So I think I'm I think I'm gonna tweak that Lakers trade a little bit. I can't remember. Maybe I'll just take it or I'm looking for other options. And I know Kemba Walker would be good, but we're gonna skip on that. Yep, we're going right for the Julius Randle. And I uh, let's see if I tweak this or not. Nope, I just go right for it. I'm taking Julius Randle while I can. So now we're looking like a pretty good team already. I mean, Carter Williams, KJ McDaniels, Antetokounmpo, Julius Randle, Joel Embiid. We're going to see what we can do with these bench players. Now, I know Henry, Henry Sims could get us Michael Kidd Gilchrist before. So we're going to see what other kind of deals are on the table when we put Henry Sims up. There's Hassan Whiteside, so I'm kind of tempted by that offer because I do like Hassan Whiteside. Kind of intrigued here just because of the switch of picks, but I don't go with that offer, I remember. I do not go with that offer. I rarely like giving up the actual 76ers picks because I know the team's not going to be great for a little while, so I'm not 
I'm not jumping the gun to trade the 2015 or 2016 draft picks because I actually have plans for those draft classes because I downloaded them, so I have a couple players I have in mind to get on the team. Um, but when it comes to 2018, 2017, I can just kind of trade those away if it's going to improve the team because as of right now, they're like three stars, two and a half stars for the 2017, 2018 picks. And that's amazing because that'll help a ton in trades when in turn I'm not really planning on drafting anyone in those drafts anyways. And even if I were, um, if we get better over the next two seasons, those draft picks are going to drop. Their overall stock is going to drop. So we're going to get rid of them while they're actually worth something. That's another thing I recommend doing. Now with the 76ers, they already have a lot of picks, so it might be easier for me to build a team. But it looks like we can pick up another pick, so we're going to do Henry Sims for a pick and Nazar Muhammad, which might not have been as good a deal as Kid Gilchrist, but we're, we're stacking up the picks for 2015, because it was a 2015 pick, that's why I liked it. Um, if it's 16, I don't really care for it, but 15, and it's like two stars, it's a team that could turn into a lottery pick or a top 10 pick, I'm going to grab that up. And right now I'm just kind of trying to jump Jason Richardson's salary, so I got two one-star athletes and I searched for trades for them, and coming up, Ben McLemore, Derek Williams, and then it wants our first round pick. So I, I kind of like the deal, but then again it's kind of risky and I'm not sure I really want to go that direction. But now I see Nikola Mirotic, a two and a half star athlete for two bad picks and a Houston first round pick, which won't turn into much, so I'm, I'm I'm thinking of that. It's Miritic here, so we're going to go ahead and open up this deal and see what we can do. Miritic is a very good three-point shooter, he's a power forward, so I'm thinking I'm going to keep him on the team at this point, but like I said before, nobody's really safe on the 76ers in my GM. <laughs> so of course, every time I get a player, I'm just going to see what I can get for him, about what he's worth, and then I will make a decision whether to keep him or not, or see if there's any better deals out there, and maybe he'll come up in a trade deal later, so we'll see how this goes. Yeah, I'm not really seeing anything I like, so I'm going to take a peek at my picks quick. Looks like I have three first-rounders for 2015, and then I'm going to see just kind of what teams are thinking uh, my 2016 pick is worth, so I'm going to do a trade finder for that. I also recommend doing that sometimes. If you don't really care about your draft picks, just do a quick trade finder for them and see what you can get. So this is actually a pretty good deal. 2016 first-round pick and a 2015 for Macklemore and Derek Williams, but I'm actually going to pass on that for now. Um, I am very interested in Ben, Lack Mad ben Macklemore. I'd like him to be my starting shooting guard. Um, he'd be a pretty good young piece to have on this team. I'm going to see what I can get for a 2015 and 16, so six stars total of these two draft picks. And it looks like Harrison Barnes is an okay deal, but I'm really going to need a lot for this. I'm, I'm not really looking to deal, but it had to be a pretty amazing offer for me to accept it. That's what's so tough about building your dynasty in my GM is you really have to look at every single situation that could possibly arise. Um, I, I'm just looking at what people would give me for what I have. You know, it's, it's not like any of these players I'm getting are actually staying on my team. and It's actually kind of like changing the entire outlook of the NBA is what I'm doing. But not very realistic. Don't get me wrong. But it looks like I found a trade here. A 2017 Bucks and a 2015 Heat. 2017 Bucks, 2015 Heat. Yeah, that's right, for Lance Stevenson. So he's a good piece to deal, or I might even start him as my shooting guard. He's had a rough year this year, but we'll see what we can do. Now that's intriguing. We have Larry Sanders for kind of a uh, no-name guy and a Sacramento first-round pick in 2015. Now, Sacramento could actually turn out to be a pretty decent team, so it could potentially be a bad pick. It could potentially be a top-10 pick. We don't know, but uh, Larry Sanders is a good centerpiece, so we're going to keep exploring our opportunities before we jump on that deal, and we'll see what's, what else is out there. For me, the Larry Sanders deal is a little bit hard to pass up because he's such a good shot blocker and a good centerpiece uh, for a team. So him in the middle. So now I have Larry Sanders, Julius Randle, Joel Embiid, and 
and New Orleans Noel. So I'm feeling pretty good right now about the big men I have. But like I said, we always explore opportunities. And here we have a deal land Stevenson, KJ McDaniels for Ben McLemore and Derek Williams. Now I like the idea of getting McLemore, but I'm not wanting to give up KJ McDaniels. So we're going to see if we can tweak this trade around a little bit and see if we can get, um, get McLemore without giving up McDaniels. So we're, I'm just trying to lower my stars and lower their stars to see if I can make this deal, deal kind of even. So I'm going to have to put Derek Williams back in there, and I'm going to add a 2018 first. Nope, 2018 second, or 2018 second, and they like that, so that's quite a deal. I got Lance Stevenson traded for Ben McLemore, a couple second round picks. So when you do Trade Finder, you can actually tweak the trades around a little bit. I highly recommend doing that. You can get it to more to your liking. Like, I wouldn't want to give up KJ McDaniels, so I can just take him out of there, throw in a couple second round picks, and they're okay with it. So just stuff like that you have to think about when you're doing this. Now, I'm kind of intrigued. I really like Derek Favors. really like Al Jefferson. Um, Derek Favors is really, really young, but I'm not wanting to give up that 2016 first round pick. But I'm going to see what Larry Sanders and that pick will get me, so I'm going to look around. and, Like I said, not all of this is fun. Not all of it is something you want to do real quick. But if you're really wanting to get the best players, you have to make sure you get the best deals. Not necessarily the players you want right away, but get the best deals you possibly can. And one good deal turns into another good deal. And then all of a sudden you have a lot of pieces that you can easily trade. And when I see Drummond, I'm kind of intrigued because Drummond is one of my favorite players in the league. He's so, so good. I mean, he averages 13 points, 13 rebounds, like two blocks. He's he's so young, he's 21. Other than Anthony Davis, he's one of the best young players in the league. So I'm seeing what I can do. Uh, I'm tweaking this a lot because I don't want to give up two of those first round picks because I know how much they mean in trades, but I want Andre Drummond. I think I just went through with that, I'm not sure. Yep, it's, it's all going so fast. No, I didn't go through with it. I backed out. But I might go right back in and see what I can get. Um, I just don't want to give up those two first round picks. That means so much in trades, I can use that later. So if I can tweak this trade around a little bit to land Andre Drummond in Philadelphia, I will do it. It's just a matter of getting the right deal. Every time I'm coming across Andre Drummond, I just really want him, like, every time I see him, I just, like, I can see him being a 76er, and I want it to happen, but those two picks, I just can't, I can't part with, so we're gonna have to make something happen here, and I don't want to piss off the owner too much. Okay, so we have 2018. Sweet. So we actually got a pretty good deal here. We got the 2018 pick, which, like I said, will decline in value over time. Two second rounders and Larry Sanders. And then we land Andre Drummond in Philadelphia. So stuff like that. I mean, they want two really good first round picks. And instead, we give them a 2018, which is two, year, I mean, two three years in the future. And then two second round picks, and we can land it um, with a little bit of help from VC. So if you have if you have like three or 4,000 in VC, you're going to be able to make a lot of these deals happen. So now uh, Jeremy Lin was kind of a throw-in deal in the in the Julius Randle trade. So he's got $8 million salary, but he's still a two-star athlete, so some teams are going to be interested in him. So we're going to see kind of who, what teams are interested in him and what I could actually get for him. So we're going to do a trade finder with him. Gordon Hayward would be a very good pickup if he weren't so expensive. 15 million a year is a very big contract. 
So now we're seeing what, what uh, Nikola Miritich could get us again, because we had him before, but now that we have all these other pieces on our team, they might want different trades for him, so that's why I go back to doing a trade finder with him. So once your, ta once your team shakes up a little bit, you can go back and do trade finders again for players. So I actually am considering Cody Zeller a little bit. I believe I actually kind of go on my phone and look up their stats in real life, and Miritich is having a very good season, but Zeller has been playing well as, as well. So we're going to see what Derek Williams can get on the market. He's pretty, he's very expensive for a one and a half star athlete. So you, typically teams just want to get uh, a pick out of him. They want to take his salary on and receive a, a pick in exchange. It's only a one year contract. So really if we have to hold on to him, we will. Because at the end of the year that cap space will just free up. So I don't really mind taking on the one year contracts. So I'm just holding, doing a whole bunch of different combinations, Derek Williams, Maxiel, Turtle in there, just seeing kind of what different combinations will give me different players, and this is just, it's a process for sure, no doubt. So see the deal for Chase Bottinger is two million less a year, so we're gonna see kind of if we can tweak this deal or no, we just take it. Sorry. <laughs> so Derek Williams is now gone. He's on the back on the Timberwolves where he's drafted, and then we have Chase Bottinger is two million less. We just gave him a second round pick. So salary is kind of a big deal in my mind. I try to get players as cheap as I can, um, but we have a really really good team so far. I'm very impressed with what I've managed to do. see what we can get for Jeremy Lin because his contract's got to go. And actually the deal with the Timberwolves, uh, Lin McDaniels for Rubio and Robbie Hummel is actually a very good deal, but like I said before, I don't want McDaniels to go. And I'm looking through Timberwolves and like I said before, I'm a Timberwolves fan and Zach Levine is just a beast and in 2K he's such a beast. So I'm kind of like hoping he can become my starting shooting guard eventually, but be kind of a six man for the time being so we're going to try landing Zach Levine now that's hard because the Timberwolves think very highly of him um, in this game especially so he, he's he's really hard to get but we're gonna tweak around as much as we can see what players fit where what kind of salaries work with each other it's kind of hard to make a deal work um, but we're gonna get we're gonna give it our best so I'm looking for a pretty high contract players on their team that have low stars so Derek Williams might be coming back see if they're interested in that they're not really there yet um, they don't want to give up Zach Levine so I'm gonna keep working at it this is kind of the blockbuster trade that I'm hoping goes down because Zach Levine is gonna be amazing for the team if we can get him like I said future starting shooting guard I'm not gonna force him in there yet but hopefully he'll be able to adapt to that role in a little bit So we're really going to go all in with this. We're going to throw in Mir, Titch, Rivers, and Lynn. Three guys that we didn't really want in the first place. And we just got to find some salaries that will work. And then none of them are working. We're going to need to take a whole bunch of their salary away for this deal to work. It looks like Thaddeus Young is going to fit in there and see if this trade will work. Oh, I can use the pump up player pitch, but I don't have the salary. So we're going to have to come back. Alright, so we're back, and now I have the, the sufficient funds. I, wait, I waited overnight, actually, so I could use my 2K15 app and grab some VC, because it was pretty late at night, and I didn't want to play a whole bunch of games to get the VC, so I just kind of wanted to wait it out overnight and get the VC back. So we're going to go right back into the trade that we just had, throw all the players in there, and then we'll be able to accept it right away with the VC. So 
bring Zach Levine over is a huge deal in my mind. Uh, we're actually losing a lot of salary. I mean, we're gaining a lot of salary, but the players that we're gaining salary, we're going to trade anyways. So we're going to lose a lot of salary at this with Lynn and Miritich leaving. And Zach Levine's only $2 million in salary, and then we're going to dump Thaddeus and... Uh, dump Derek Williams. Dump Derek Williams for sure. We'll see about that. He is. He might. He might fit in, but he's got a pretty big contract, so I'm thinking he's probably going to be on his way out. But there we go. There's the deal. <laughs> got rid of Lynn. Got rid of Miritich. Got rid of Austin Rivers, which I'm fine with, because Zach Levine is going to be a star in this team, and I did what I had to do. But we're not done yet. We gotta make a few more deals happen. The team's looking good, but I feel that we can add more. Um, especially with the salaries we have to get rid of now with Thaddeus and uh, Derek Williams. We're gonna see what Thaddeus is, worth. Thaddeus is worth on the market. He's only a two star athlete for nine million. Um, it's kind of hard to trade. Like I said, they always try throwing picks in and seeing what they can get out of the two. So we're gonna just shop around and see what he'll actually get us. Couldn't really find anything for Thaddeus. We're gonna go with Derek Williams right now, see what we can get for him. Just see if we can dump the salary for goodness sakes. I'm actually quite intrigued with the deal from the Celtics, but I mean, my number one tip is to explore all your possibilities. You don't just jump on trades when you see them. You gotta make sure it's the best deal. And I'm looking through all the teams, weighing my options, seeing that I get I get two two-star athletes for two stars and one and a half stars, and then the salary is a little bit less. And I have a better feeling about trading Avery Bradley being a younger player, and then Brandon Bass is actually a decent piece to move around. But see what I mean? See what I'm doing here? I'm just getting a whole bunch of players I think are going to be better in trades. And I'm not really just going right for the players I want. You have to kind of build a team up because just think about it. I pretty much still have the 76ers starting lineup and I've added a lot of good pieces. It just takes a while. It takes kind of a long time to actually get all the pieces in place and to, to bring them where they need to be. But it seems to be working. Now, Brand Bass... Um, Looks like we can get David West and a pick out of him. Um, David West's salary is pretty big, but again, it's a one-year contract, so we might be able to just dump him at the end of the season or see if we can get a trade and get rid of him right away. But all this trading is going to pay off in the end. We're going to have the team that we actually want. We just got to get these salaries out. So I'm going to see what I can get for Bass and Buttinger. So 2015 first and David West for Brandon Bass looks like a pretty good deal actually. I think we're going to go ahead and jump on that. Um, we're going to have to move David West for his salary, but anytime you can pick up a 2015 first, it's always a pretty good idea, so we're going to do that. So 
So we see David West and Avery Badley for a Indiana 2015 first round pick, and we can get Serge Ibaka in it. So that's actually a really good deal. And Anthony Morrow is a two star athlete as well. So all around, it's looking like a really good deal for us. And the fans love our acquisition of Serge Ibaka, so we're going to say he's going to be a good starter. I mean, <laughs> when we get Serge Ibaka, think about this Andre Drummond and Serge Ibaka inside, and Serge Ibaka can actually shoot threes. So I actually like that acquisition. He's got a big salary. And then Embiid won't be able to start and develop. So, I mean, it's a good trade, but we're going to see in, in the future if we'll keep Serge Ibaka or not. We'll have to kind of see when the trade deadline comes around. Uh, we're going to try him out, though, and kind of see how it goes with the team. But I'd really like to develop Joel Embiid. So might be a tough decision in the future, but I'm glad we got Serge now. He's a good piece. So it looks like we found a pretty good deal here, trading Anthony Morrow and Chase Buttinger away for Clay Anthony early and Jose Calderon. Now it's a good deal because Calderon's contract is $7 million, but we are going to dump that. We're going to trade him for somebody else. And Clay Anthony early being at $500,000, it's actually a very cheap young contract. He can get better over the next year or two. Um, and if he does, he'll be worth more, or his salary being that low is also worth it as well. So dumping salary um, will always help the team because we can have more room to sign free agents in the future. So we're going to try dumping Calderon right away. So I actually find a, found a pretty good deal here. Calderon and Hito Turbulent dumping $8 million in salary for Jarrell Wright and Joel Freeland. Now again, it's just getting from that $7 million salary down to the $3 million each. If you want to dump salaries, you got to do that a lot. So you got to find two players who are kind of splitting the cost of that salary, and those players will be easier to trade for lower salary players. So a lot of teams can't take on a $7 million salary unless they give you a $7 million salary. But if you have a $3 million salary, a lot of teams can wiggle with that and trade you a $500,000 salary for a $3 million salary. So that's another tip in trying to get rid of your salary. So right here, I'm trying to just trade three players players um, just just the three lower players in the team see what I can get sometimes you can actually get things pretty good for these especially if you have a star and a half or a two star athlete in there so Dewan Blair and Paul Pierce is actually pretty tempting I thought that I might take that for a while uh, but we're not gonna take it right now we're gonna look for other deals and see what comes about So I find a pretty interesting deal here. Joel Friedland at $3 million salary for Jameer Nelson. Uh, he's a one and a half star athlete for $2.7 million. And then a 2015 second round pick as well that I can throw in a trade later. So that's actually a pretty good deal because I'd rather try to jump to dump Jameer Nelson than dump Joel Friedland. I'm kind of surprised they offered me that deal actually because they gave me two stars for one. I'm not really sure what was going on there. But uh, we're going we're gonna to work with it. But the team's looking really good so far for starting out with the 76ers roster and keeping all the good players. I don't really know uh, how this is even happening. I, don't, I mean, I spent 2000 BC, but uh, this is kind of crazy. So I'm trying jumping Jimmy Nelson and Jason Maxiel. So like I said, there's just a lot, a lot of different moves. So I can straight up dump their salaries right here for a 2017 second. Um, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to see if I can actually get something for him because Jameer Nelson's a star and a half. And so is uh, so is uh, another player on my team. forgot his name. But I'm going to pair them together and see what I can get. But Tyler Hansborough and Greg Steamson was actually very tempting as well. I like both those players. So I think I'm going to go back to that later if I can't find anything better. But like I said, explore all your options. We're going to pair together Jameer Nelson. Darrell Wright, that's the name I was thinking of, Darrell Wright. We're going to pair those two athletes that are one and a half stars together and see what kind we can, 
kind of athletes we can get. So right here, Thomas Robinson and Alan Crabb. I really like Thomas Robinson. He's got a pretty big salary at $3.68 million, but he can come in off the bench and be a pretty good power forward and develop him as a young player too. So he's only 23. And then we're getting Alan Crabb, who is a young player we can either keep and develop or trade again. So I'm, like I said, I'm tr trading for lower salaries and players who are, have the potential to get better over the years. Let's see if I can just get rid of these last two people. See if Alan Crabb can get me anything good. So right here, Alan Crabbe and Max Hill for Bruno Caboclo and Steensma. So I like Steensma because he's from Wisconsin, so am I. And then Bruno is a 19-year-old like prospect. Like He could be a really good player someday. He's just not playing in the NBA quite yet. Um, a lot at least. So we're going we're gonna to get them and see what we can do with that. I think Bruno can actually be kept on the team. And so can Steensma. So that was actually a good deal so see how I'm kind of just dumping players and seeing who I can get and I want to see what I could get John Luer for and it's Clay Anthony really in a second round pick now that second round pick I can use in trades later or use to draft a player I might want at the end of the year and then yeah Clay Anthony really is in there as well we're going to want to keep him so right now I'm going to go through adjust the rotations a little bit um, see what our starting lineup looks like and it's pretty looking very good for what we started out with. I think this is very impressive what I did actually. I've done a lot of my GMs and turning the team I had into this is actually really impressive. <laughs> and yeah, this is the end product right now until uh, until the trade deadline. We might make a few more moves there, but um, after this episode, I'm going to do an episode of what the team looks like. So we're going to actually play a game, get you some highlights from that, and see how this team actually plays together, how the bench players come off, and see if there's any any additional moves that we need to make um, trade wise to make the team better but let's just see how the how the minutes end up divvying it up and seeing what happens we're really going to want to push Levine in there as kind of the backup two guard and sometimes go in there at the point when Carter Williams is too tired so what I typically like doing is having 10 good players having a backup for each position and then I put 30 minutes towards all the starters and 18 towards all the backups and if there's two players I want to split so if there's 11 players I give one 10 and one 8 and then I just work from there. Who do I want to take minutes from? Who do I want to give more minutes to? Then it kind of works like that. So KJ McDaniels will be backing up um, Giannis, Antetokounmpo, and Macklemore and then like Levine will be backing up. McLemore and sometimes Carter Williams and Peyton will only be Alfred Peyton will only be backing up Carter Williams so it's just it's a lot of give and take with the roster so what I'm going to do is see what I can get for Serge right now just to see what he's worth again I don't know if I'll trade him until the trade deadline but I'm thinking I'm going to keep the team I have now but I just want to see because I was thinking about how much I wanted to develop Joel and Bede. And I can tell you right now, actually, I'm not going to make any more deals. The roster I had is pretty much the roster. So if you want to see that roster in action, tune in for the next episode. If you want to see more trades, tune in for the episode after that. And actually, in my next episode, I'm going to give you some tips and tricks on how to develop your players the best. So if you want if you want to learn how to develop your players, tune in for the next episode. But I'll be signing off for the first episode. So thank you for watching YouTube, and have a great day.